was really right. The pretenders, they'll be overshadowed when you start to live uh, like you ought to live. Hallelujah. The feelers will soon fade out when God's work is really done. But there's a movement in the church that's bringing great harm to the work of God. That because there's a hindrance to the cause of Christ, you can't just stop the large number of believers, those who have their name on the church roll, and you want to just stop where you are. Somebody have made up your mind. I, I've done as much as I'm going to do. So I'm going to just stop. The quitters are the ones who are hindering the church. Hallelujah. And those of us who have our name on the road, if we were not quitting, if we were not stopping, and sometimes we slow down and you start to put on the brakes and you start dragging your feet. You all have gotten mighty quiet on me. Hallelujah. Some have quit because they become discouraged. Some quit because they become distracted. Their friends have distracted them. Their friends are not serving the almighty God. And they feel like if my friends are not doing what they ought to do, then why should I? Hallelujah. Some have become distracted. And that's because of their family. Some now are taking the Lord's day for your family day but if it's God's day you ought to bring your family to God rather than taking it as a family day some have become distracted because of your success some are working now seven days a week just to make more money Hallelujah. Some have become distracted because of your failure. Some have quit because they don't believe God can use them because of past sins. Hallelujah. Wrong choices that you made in the past. Hallelujah. Some have stopped. Because they've been disappointed. And you hear folks saying, I've been hurt by somebody in the church. Hurt ought not stop you from praising the Almighty God. Some have been disappointed because God didn't answer their prayer the way you thought. He ought to answer your prayer. But let me tell you, God knows what's best. Yet you might not see it God's way. But his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. Quitting <coughs> might be the simplest thing to do. Many think that quitting will relieve them of their responsibility that God has given unto them. Some stop because they simply just give up. Hallelujah. But what is it that quitters have stopped doing? They've stopped witnessing for the Lord. They'll stop tithing to the work of God. They've stopped spending time with the Lord. 
they have stopped praying like they ought to pray. And many have stopped going to church. That's why buildings are still empty. Not because names are not on the church roll, but somebody have quit doing what you know you ought to do. It doesn't mean that they've changed churches. They just stopped going all together. Some are just one worship service. Christians. And they've quit coming to that one service. Hallelujah. Some of us one Sunday morning Christians if they stop coming on Sunday morning they won't get there at all. It ought not be just one time and that's on Sunday morning but you ought to find some time to spend with the Lord. Hallelujah. We find there Christians used to sing in the choir but you stop singing in the choir. There are those used to teach Sunday school but don't teach Sunday school any longer. Hallelujah. But then you have folk in the church who just don't want to commit to any responsibility or position in the church. There are Christians who quit believing God even for revival. And when I talk about people who stop working for the Lord, who stop serving the Lord, I'm not talking about the sinner out there. I'm talking about folk who are in the church, who have a name on the church row that call themselves believers. Those who have actually quit are about to quit. Hallelujah. Let me see if I can close this out and go to my seat. In our text here today, Nehemiah, he had the opportunity to quit. In fact, he had a right. He had a reason to quit. Hallelujah. There was the attack that came from without. Sanballat and Tobiah, they wanted the work to cease. Amen. They tried their best Amen. to stop Nehemiah. There was agony from the inside and all the trouble that show up yeah. is not always from the outside. Sometimes it's on the inside. Hallelujah. The people, they complained. They got discouraged. They became worn and weary but Nehemiah he wouldn't stop and I can hear him saying over in the third verse it's too soon to quit we can't stop now and that ought to be our march word I can't stop now he brought me too far hallelujah God still who wants the church to do great things, to do mighty things. You've not done all God's assigned unto your hands. And all I'm trying to say, we can't quit. We can't stop now. We got to march. <clears throat> Nehemiah, in spite of all he faced he didn't stop Amen. he had a conviction yes, to accept the word of God yes. hallelujah and we hear him say in that third verse 
He says, I'm doing a great work. Nehemiah accepted the challenge to do the work of God. Nobody forced him to go to Jerusalem. Nobody forced him to rebuild the walls and to repair the gate. Nehemiah, when he received word that there was a great affliction and reproach in Jerusalem, he became burdened, broken about what had taken place there in Jerusalem. Nehemiah went before the king. He had a sad countenance. Nehemiah was the king's cupbearer. And you don't go before the king with a sad countenance. Nehemiah became convicted about what had taken place there in Jerusalem. He had a deep conviction. He had a deep desire. I want to go back, rebuild the wall, put up the gates again. Hallelujah. For the gates had been burned down. That was a personal conviction. That was a burning desire to do his work. Nehemiah took God's work personally. Hallelujah. In that third verse, he says, I am doing. In other words, even though other folk are working, yet I'm working, so I'm doing a great work. I can't come down. I cannot stop. I've got to keep on working. Hallelujah. Now everybody had a job to do, a position to take. They were scattered about in different sections on the wall. And everybody had a personal responsibility on the wall. Some had weapons and they were watching. Some had tools and they were working. But every Christian had a responsibility in the work of the almighty God. And God gives his children a personal call. He may not call you to preach, but there is a call. God calls the tall and the short. The slim and the big, the all together lovely, and those who are completely ugly. Hallelujah. God calls <coughs> the upper, the lower, the middle class, and then the no class. God calls the educated and the uneducated. God calls the strong and the weak. God calls the young, the middle-aged, and the older. God calls the one that's full of personality and the one who's shy. God calls the wealthy and the poor, the married and the single. God calls those with five talents, those with two talents, those with one talent. In other words, there is a call. For every child of God. But we find Nehemiah. Had a powerful. Conviction. Yeah. Yeah. Nehemiah called it a great work. And that's because he knew. It was God's work. Yeah. And if you're doing God's work. Anything God called you to do. 
for him and for his glory. It is a great work. It might not be great in some eyesight, but it's great in God's eyesight. And I heard Brother Paul say, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. <coughs> the work God has given you to do, it may be seen by others. Your work may go unnoticed. Your work might be difficult. Your work might seem simple. But you ought to count it a privilege and an honor just to serve for Almighty God. I might be a doorkeeper in my Lord's kingdom, but I'm honored to be a doorkeeper in his kingdom. It doesn't matter, church, what you're doing for him. Don't quit. But serve on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you look at it, Nehemiah wasn't forced. Nobody begged him to do God's work. When he heard about the walls being broken down, the gates being burned, he was convicted down in his heart. He couldn't sit where he was, but he took some action to get things back in order. He had a conviction to accept the work of God, but then he had a commitment in achieving the work of God. Nehemiah said, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. So in essence, Nehemiah wasn't about to stop. He wasn't about to get distracted from his work. There was no way he was going to come down from his position upon the wall. And all I'm trying to tell you, when God called you, when you're working for the almighty God, don't let folk turn you around. Don't let folk cause you to lose your focus. Don't let folk come stop you from working. When you look at Nehemiah, we let anything turn us around. Nehemiah, he was threatened, but he didn't stop. His enemy wanted him to stop what you are doing. They sent letters. They sent threats. They got angry. They were against the work of God. But Nehemiah, he was committed to achieving the work. Nehemiah said, I cannot come down. I will not come down. I cannot stop doing what I'm doing. <laughs> he was tired. But he didn't stop. Do you ever get tired? While you're on the journey. He was tired. But he didn't stop. He worked diligently. He was not about to let the work. He was doing for the Lord. Cease from his hand. 
His hands must have been weary. His back must have been hurting. Hallelujah. His legs were probably worn down from standing up. His arms must have been aching. I heard the writer sing in that ninth verse. For they all made us afraid. Sin their hands shall be weakened from the work. But Nehemiah went in the prayer. I heard Nehemiah say, Now therefore, O oh God, strengthen my hand. In other words, I've gotten a little weak. My body is tired. I can't make it all by myself. Lord, I need you to strengthen my hand. And all I'm trying to tell you, when you can't make it all by yourself, there is somebody that can strengthen. 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 When you look at it, <clears throat> Nehemiah, he didn't tell the Lord, I rebuild the walls, I repair the gates as long as I don't have to face any opposition. Some of us, as long as everything it's smooth sailing. You don't mind working. Hallelujah. But I heard somebody say, God, church, is not a conditional God. In other words, church, you ought not have all those conditions before you serve the Lord. I'm trying to tell you, God will stand by your side when you work for him. He will supply your every need. When you work for him, he'll make your enemy leave you alone. But every now and then, hallelujah, you got to stand. And when you stand, God will stand right by your side. <clears throat> My question, have you surrendered your life to God? Or have you gone back on your promise? that you made to God. I've never heard one Christian say, I'll serve God as long as there is no trouble. Let me just tell you, you're gonna face some trouble. You're gonna have some problems. You're gonna have some difficulties. You're gonna face Satan's tricks. But don't stop. God didn't leave you all by yourself. And I heard somebody say, if God walk with me, if he hold my hand, if he guide my mind, a few things might tangle my feet, but none will hold me fast. Hallelujah. He had a conviction to accept the work of God. He had a commitment in achieving the work of God. He had a choice about accomplishing the work of God. Nehemiah asked the question, why should the work cease? He didn't give up. I don't care what happened. He didn't give up. 
He didn't give in. I don't care how they tried him. He didn't give out when he got a little tired. Why would you quit? Why would you quit? You're not just quitting on the church. You're not just quitting on the Christians around you. You're quitting on the almighty God. Why would you quit on the almighty God? The one that woke you up. The one that started you on your way. Why would you quit? <laughs> Let me just tell you, you might not be able to do what you used to do, but you're still able to do something for the Lord. If you stop, what are you gonna tell your family? If you stop, what are you gonna tell other Christians? If you stop, what are you going to tell the Lord? Hallelujah. And what I'm trying to say, I can't stop now. I can't stop now. I heard somebody say, I've come too far from where I started from. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me now. I can't give up now. I can't stop when I think about how good God's been, where God brought me from. I can't stop now. I got to run on, see what the end will be. I want to be able to hear his voice. Sir, When you see me working, I can't stop. As long as breath stays in my body, as long as God gives me health and strength, I can't stop. I've got to. I've got to. There's a burning desire that's down in my heart. So I can't stop now. Hallelujah. I've come too far. And I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me now. Hallelujah. You're a quitter. If you start putting on the brakes, it's not about you. It's about him. <coughs> Don't worry about folk. You're going to have some gossipers. And you're going to have some complainers. And you're going to have some feelers. And you're going to have all of that. But that same God. That's brought you to where you are. Same God. That's holding you by the hand. That same God. You're here today. You've had it in your mind. You want to slow down. Quit. You might start looking at other folk. Other folk don't do. But they're going to be rewarded. For what they do. And I thank God. My crown. Is not based on what you do. You're here today. We invite you to come. I can't stop now. Hallelujah. Will you come?
Will you come? Give your heart to give your life to the Lord.
Cry. 